Welcome to the Monkeys Fighting Robots YouTube channel. I'm Matt Sardo, and today we are talking about the art and many other mistakes of Eric Powell. Please like and subscribe this video. It goes a long way in helping the channel out. I feel like everybody says that nowadays, but yeah, just give it a like. I'm really excited about this book. I didn't realize how much heart and emotional depth and like chaos was going to be involved in an art book. I was not prepared for what happens in this book. And I want to take you on a journey of emotion and chaos with Eric Powell. Let's dive in. I love this cover. He's like looking through me, through you, through us. And then you have these interiors. I, I am a huge fan of red interiors on a book. It just, there's something about it that gets me riled up. I think that Eric Powell has a dust bowl noir style. I feel like it's like Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones esque. And there's a softness to his work that really grabs a hold on you and brings you in emotionally to the art. It, like that's, that's the emotional grab there is his, uh, the softness to it. I also didn't know that this was a biography by Blaine Wortham, PhD. And the stories that are in this are, are really good. I was not, again, I thought I was getting a cute art book and I was going to flip through the pages and be like, ooh, this is pretty, this is pretty, this is pretty. But then we actually like get Eric's backstory and everything that went on with him and, and there's a connection that was made. You know, trailer trash, the humble beginnings of a passable cartoonist, the early work of a floundering fraud who should have stayed a failure. Titty comics and hard times, rise of the goon, sell out, entering the mainstream. A journey of many mistakes, the personal work of Powell. Albatross and 20 years of the goon. So much good stuff in here. And the goon is such an iconic character now. Or in my comic book history, like I just see him and I know exactly what's going on. And again, this is where I feel these don't come across as like Bond villain girls or Bond girls. They come across as like Indiana Jones girls. And I'm trying to figure out why I have that like connection to his work. But there's always like, I think just because there's always like a mystical element going on here. Also, if you're keeping tabs, see how many times I say eyeballs. After reading this book, or looking at this book, I've made a connection. And uh, we're, I don't know if Eric's trying to steal our soul with the amount of eyeballs he puts in this book, but he definitely is trying to creep me out. But you get some nice backstory here. Elvis Presley, early artwork. Eric's grandma, little Jean Crow. Don Knotts. Has this weird Gen X connection. I feel like we experienced Don Knotts through Disney films and reruns. For me specifically, like Three is Company. But Don Knotts had such a huge Disney influence. It was before the Disney Plus era of those 60s and 70s uh, live action Disney films. Oh, look at this 90s. Amazing, you know, Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee infused greatness of a young Eric Powell. In this senior photo, it's got to be one of the best senior photos ever. Cover from high school comic title corner. Man, if, if my high school was even like remotely excited about comic books when I was a kid. My life would have taken a completely different direction. Would it would I not be talking about comic books right now? 
Oh, look. Do you want to draw for Image Comics? This is beautiful right here. But again, like, he doesn't have a Jim Lee or a Liefeld or a McFarlane. He, he may have a little bit more mcfarlane because McFarlane likes this kind of muscular tonin, tone in <laughs> tone. Muscular tell must I wanted to say melatonin, this muscular tone that he uses, but again, look at all the detail in there. And everything, like it's all glorious. Early unpublished work. Eric, just publish this work. And this is where it really the softness that he has to his artwork also has an emotional spectrum where he's pouring his heart into the world, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, he's pouring everything out into his artwork. But then he has this soft innocentness, and then he has this dark side. This picture right here is Eric Howell. If you want to step in his head, it's right there. And Eric is such an amazing indie creator that I really need to get a hold of him and have him come to Indie Comics Creator Con because... Everything that I had, everything that happened at Indie Comics Creator Con, like, feels like Eric should be there. Like, he gives off the vibe that I was trying to create. So, Eric, if you're listening or watching, let's connect and let's figure out how to make you part of Indie Comics Creator Con. Again, I talk about the softness, the muscular tone that he uses. You know, because you've seen Wolverine before, but this is, like, photorealistic artwork but this is hand drawn like this is bonkers good but then all the detail look at all the detail going on in here it's like next level pencil samples of for Wolverine for Wolverine and Alien Temptress 1997 so good I love the spectrum he does with like pencils to inks and I love how drastically different they are. I love this. That, that's a McFarlane panel layout right there if I've seen one. And the way this is setting up for the page turn. Dino Wranglers. Retro. The Ape. Monkeys fighting robots. Or monkey, you know, monkeys hanging out with robots. Big monsters, eyeballs, eyeballs. And he does this texture thing um, a couple more times in the book where he has solid ink work, bold ink, bold ink work, and then sketching in the background to kind of layer the book or layer the page. I don't know what happened to his eye there, but that's another crazy one. I also didn't know that he did a Star Wars book. So I might have to go back and uh, try to find this. It's probably beautiful. The Rise of the Goon. Look at these character sketches. Fishy Pete. Unpublished Goon. The Spotlight cover is iconic. We've seen it before several different iterations and but it works so well for comic books. I think it's one of the better tropes in comic books is the spotlight cover. The goon. Yeah, this is early amazing greatness. He's falling towards the page turn. Prologue. The bat creates this triangle. Lead to the page turn. Another triangle leading to the page turn. He's also walking out, which makes you want to go through the page turn. Like the, you see the bat up and then you see where it ends. You don't need the actual swing. You need, he's back to swing. Swing happens, whack. And you have stuff falling off the bat. Yeah, the storytelling elements of this is really good. They're not open, but there's lots of eyeballs in here. I love that Frankie is plain because he has so much detail everywhere else. And so you have a balance of like detail, 
and then non details eyeballs 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 no eyeballs oh they're walking this way and the page makes you go walk towards the page turn i talk about the page turn all the time guys the buzzard oh so creepy again very soft innocent face but then creepy as f going on over here so creepy some trolls to be continued just creepazoid yeah i i lose i lose it on this page right here so good eyeballs 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 no eyeballs no eyeballs everybody's going for this look now in the indie scene yet he was homaging the look in 2002 it's you look into his soul with some of his covers it's like here here's the goon here's the darkness i don't know when frankie would be it almost doesn't look right when they like when he does it full color like this because he does some really cool tonal things later on that I call it like sepia tones where when it's like naturally colored it kind of feels off almost like a cartoon this is a great picture right here because this shows the duality of his skill set and when I talk about like these are both amazing this half is amazing this half is amazing so you have the pencil sketches and then you have the heavy inks and the heavy inks work really well. And also the pencil sketches. Like there's two different styles. One's more just black and white and one's more in the grays. But they're both really beautiful. I remember when this comic, this comic came out in my store. Eyeballs, no eyeballs. Something going on there. Chinatown again. I'm really getting the Indiana Jones vibe from Eric. I don't, I don't, I don't get Bond villain girls or Bond girls. I get solid Indiana Jones, and again, I think it could be like the mystical element that that pops in there. Like this, all this sketch work is fun to watch. Or fun to. It's fun to visualize and see the progression from sketches to final product. And the goon storytelling elements like you set up here, close up, reaction, desire. Like it's just all, you know, everything. Desire, bare shoulder. Yeah, the goon's looking down here. He's looking at the legs and back to the eyes. Like, this is definitely how a guy thinks right there. But again, like, you're going through that pattern. And then the look away. It's pretty amazing. Very cinematic. And then I talk about this. I'm going to talk about this a lot. You want to look into the soul of Eric Powell? This is a page right here where he's looking at himself and just bringing it to the page. And, and this company, you know, the stories that are inside this book as well are very engaging. The history, what, you know, Eric's trajectory and path and where he's gone and what has happened. Like, I was not expecting this book to be as crazy deep as it is. That might be my own naivety. But yeah, the gentleman who doesn't fit in, the freak of the, the carnival freak, like, I don't know. Eric, 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 do you feel like that? I mean, that's how it comes across in the pages, what's coming across in the, in the unauthorized biography. Lots of tentacles. Have lots of that. Eyeballs, eyeballs, look creepy eyeballs. This is always fun to see how covers work out design. Oh, eyeball, giant eyeball. 
This story, this story right here is worth the price of admission. A small pushback leads to a huge insane comic book. Satan sodomy, baby, interior cover art. Yeah. Let's see what happens there, people. Robots. There's like a 50s feel. Like it's. I feel like Eric can do work in almost any time period. But again, eyeballs. This has like that 60s attack from Mars feel. Like the goon and, and Cranky are just bouncing around in different times. Oh, man. He's really good. Look at that. Like, so much emotion is in there. I don't think we've gotten to the punching animals phase. But the trash can and the toss. Again, first action. He skips the middle action and shows just the react shows what happens. This page turn is awesome because you have the match and the flick, and the flick is going to the page turn. But his face is gonna get lighted on fire. See? He jump off. And then this they're walking to the page turn. So you're like walking with them. Oh, look, throwing a man, throwing a man. The goon does a lot of fun things. Oh, yeah, here's where the animals start having punching seals. We're punching seals? I love the red in this. And all of these, the, the axes. No eyes? Creepy eyes. So creepy. He's really good at big monsters, too. I want to see him do Ullock. Punch the, I mean, this is a bad guy animal. We punch the bad guy animal. But you see, like, when he... When things are, I guess, colored traditionally, like... It has a weird feel to it. Like, it, he needs to have, like... His Instagram filter that he created way before Instagram was invented. Eyeballs, 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 no eyeballs. Nice texture piece again. We showed that before. Heavily inked and then the wall texture. Ew. Intense action right there. Thwack. 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 Lots of blood. His movement. The movement of his artwork. Like. Flows very well. These homages. Brilliant. Norman Rockwell. I would put that on my wall. My wife would think that's hilarious. Punching another. That's a good punching. I wonder if he just says like. She has a whole bunch of punching faces. Yeah. Punching the horse. My kids got a crack out of that one. I love the S on this one right here. This is so beautifully done. Where you just follow it around and your eye I just it's so ple it's so pleasing to the eye. Like this is super eye candy. And I like how he shows you, you know, picking a color palette and then white washing it out. This has like a a C slash L shape, but it still works. It 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 creates movement when you have stuff like this. Where everything's kind of mowing it going up. Eyeballs, eyeballs, eyeballs. So many eyeballs in this one. Classic goon pose. I like this. These characters here. Walking away, page turn. Face in the corner. Is that the dude? Is that the dude? I'm not sure. I'm feeling it though. Eyeballs. Some solid quotes in here. So much heart and emotions poured into this page right here. Look at that. Look at all that detail. Look at all the darkness. Oh, look. Bill is stuck. And then 
your brain makes you go here, which then leads you to page turn. You're like the the goon is still right here. He's so frozen. Yet then when you realize it's down here by the hammer, the blood is just dripping. And there's a solid movement to this page right here. But it's well designed, like where it's the last thing it hits you is Oh. This is bleeding. Nice. Epic cover there. Giant eyeballs. But I do like this one, though. A lot of action going on in this page. For 51. Just run. Just run through walls. Eyeballs. I have a range. You have a Kraken. How are we going to do? Current triangle created by the page turn. The world of characters that Eric can create is like wholesome and creepy. It's, it's nightmare fuel. It's all nightmare fuel. But everything's very unique. Chapter 5, Sellout, Entering the Mainstream. Yeah, this Batman is really good. Oh, look, eyeballs, even on Batman. Giant eyeball. Demon. Yeah, Marvel should definitely let him draw the Hulk or do a Hulk mini. I think that would be insane. Just let him go to town with like, I didn't want a different monster. Do five issues, different monster each time. Again, the differences in this. I mean, this is blown up a little bit more, but like, this feels really creepy. This one has like a creepy energy where like the color kind of takes away from the creepiness of it. Interesting. Epic monsters and Swamp Thing. This is a really good cover. And the color palette used for this is just so engaging. The green and the red, and then the underneath, the undertone, like they're already under your skin at this point in time and just creeping you out. Jolly the Green Giant just ripped off the head of the end, uh, Energizer Bunny. Hey, big boy's in the middle of this. I have a big boy. I have a lot of big boys. Fun to see. Snap, Crackle, Pop, or Beating Up Pet Boys. I like that. I like it a lot. Such an angry raisin. The Simpsons, Treehouse of Horror, that, that took me back, but also, like, this is next level engaging slash creepy that he does with Simpsons. Poor Marge. She's going to make it. Oh, yeah. This is. Oh. Bizarro just fits uh, Eric's style so well. Two thousand seven, yeah. Hey day greatness right here. Yeah, like look at that. So good. Oh look at triangle page turn. Oh, he's pulling him towards the page turn. Let's just follow the eyes. Eyes go like this. They go like this. To this. To this. Boom, bizarro. You want some Frank Miller? Batman, here you go. I didn't know I wanted Eric to do um, a, uh, a Hobbit slash Lord of the Rings book, but apparently I do after this Black Knight cover. Oh, and after seeing this, like this is if this is where I'm going to spend all my money is. Eventually getting Eric Powell to do a Spider-Man, because that is, by God, brilliant right there. More eyeballs. Tread's a good book for Eric. I think it's this, man. It's 
break me out. The spirit. Oh, man. Whew. So much detail. So much, like, just, just in there. It's, there's a bagginess, yet, like, it's tonal. And it's just the spirit. So good. You just feel it all. Yeah, this is oh, so good. This is what made, makes me want them to uh, draw Ulrich or, or Thor. Thor would be a fun book with just monsters. Uh, just bring in all the monsters. This is like a weird like John Candy vibe, very Mad Magazine esque. Like there's a there's a character caricature element to it. Sad clown. This page right here. This is beautiful. If you have time to do this in a comic book, like this is this is again nightmare fuel, like penetrating horror, like. The build-up, the anxiety of everything that happens when this book. What's going to happen on the page? I have no clue. But like, the color balance, the panel balance, like, and then just to keep close enough. There's just, whew, I'm like, ah, nightmare fuel. And then you get to Huck Finn. You're like, oh man, hope and optimism. But then you're like, oh look, where there's got to be some creepy undertone happening there. And there is, because it was it was a time period. But man, you just want to gaze into that sun and go fishing. We can punch Nazis. I'm fine with that. Love me some Godzilla. That's an interesting. It's God. It's interesting how he interprets Godzilla. It's got like pointy ears, more cat-like kind of thing. That's more. It's still got like a cat ear thing going on there. And Godzilla's is more rounded. My summer vacation. That's funny. Did I mention Eric likes to talk about eyeballs? Because he does. This is where uh, a few pages of his artwork just gets a little wonky for me. I don't know if it's how it's colored or the heavy outlines. It just doesn't something. The hard light does something for me. Throws me off a little bit. I wonder if he was experimenting at this point in time. Yeah, like this white. It just there's something about it. It stands out, but it's still like it bothers me. This right here. Oh, here's your Norman Rockwell painting right there. Oh, so good. I love how he he has great angles. He picks great angles on his subjects to where they're walking or standing. Birth, movies, death. Are they still around? But I'll take some Planet of the Apes. Yeah, like this has a this has a grit to it. You know, you can see by the way it's painted and stuff like that. And then this is cleaner. And it just I don't know. Something different about it. But I do like that. That's good. A little buffy, a little predator. Sorry, Jughead. Oh, look at this creepiness. Yeah, looking at this, cre you know, creepy number one. Like, like Eric, can you do a Scooby-Doo comic book for me? And I look down here, I'm like, somebody just got hacked in half. So, But yeah, I, we, we, but somebody needs to talk to DC Comics and let Eric Powell do a Scooby-Doo because that would be, Really good. I like this Billy the Kid one right here. Billy the Kid, old timey oddities, oddities, and the ghastly fiend of London. That's a nice cover. Yeah, I don't think she's doing too well. Again, we talked about this before where he likes to stack some texture to make his main character stand out. Like this is more clean ink, and then he has more unfinished style in the background and it makes things pop really well. Hey, chimichanga. I like this. I love monster building. You know, like 
how did where did you come from? Eyeballs, eyeballs. Robots. This is a creepy, creepy clown. Conan. Eyeball. Yeah, this is a really beautiful page. With all the admiration and respect, it's Dan Sakai, Eric Powell. This is the beautiful, beautiful page right there. I love that rhino. Rhinos are like very stoic and powerful. But yeah, it's a great interpretation of the character. Oh, look, Nightmare Fool. Oh, what are you going to dream about tonight? I don't know. Could it be like horns and and steaks and all this other stuff? Here is Eric piloting a skid steer tractor, no doubt inebriated. Here is a prime example of his carelessness as he pulls himself and his party goers in danger, or puts himself in danger. The aftermath of a 4th of July party. The exploding 1978 Nova. The Goon Burlesque Show. Yeah. I feel sorry for people who don't drink. When you wake up in the morning, that's the best you're going to feel all day. Jack Lemon. Jack Lemon's another one. I think he's like tail end Gen Xer, like blends in. Because he had grumpy old man, but then also you wanted to go back and like re see what he's done before or after that. I do like this like sci-fi thing when he does sci-fi things. So much movement going on. Boom. I love that. What's going on? There's always stuff in the background. I'll dance at your funeral if you dance at mine. Yeah. No. Creepy monsters. Self-portrait. Is this self-portrait? Oh, man. F me. Sorry, Eric. Yeah, this is good. This Then he gets his cute stuff. I'll tell you to hang in there. But you're so metal, you need only to stand on the skulls of those who have fallen before the darkness of your black soul. Aha! Metal. This is a nice little it's a nice soft story right here. Robots. Again, I don't see a Bond girl. I see a villain in an Indiana Jones movie. David Bowie, Elvira, Sherlock Holmes. This David Bowie is pretty epic. Yeah. Will Eisner tribute. I feel it. Guitars. Hey yo. Or less pinups. I mean when you can draw the figure, you have like nice round smoothness. You're pretty good to you're you're in the right place to draw ladies. Roller Derby pin up. I think Roller Derby's coming back. Oh, the thing. Battle Pug! Yeah, Mike Norton Battle Pug. So good. I like these little stories. Such a good book, man. This book is totally worth it. Like, you should totally, you know, get this book if it's sitting in your comic book shop. The stories that are in there are really insane and, like, make you feel for Eric and make you feel for the creator. And then the artwork is just... Just you can sit here and analyze everything and just, just feel Eric's heart and emotion and blood, sweat and tears just put into these different characters. Because there, that isn't easy. There's so much detail filling in that emotion. Oh, look, eyeballs. Yeah. Walking away. Oh, the hand going across. Sets up page turns very well. Ah, the creepy aspect of like again nightmare fuel. So much nightmare. 
I love that bear. That bear is sick. Where is it? Where is the bear? I know the bear's around here somewhere. Yeah. Again, more emotion. Look at all that. You could feel him talking. You could see him talking. So much movement. The movement he puts in stuff is is awesome. Creepy. Yeah, that kid's dead. Totally dead. Again, like happy, innocent, yet creepy. Just straight up creepy. Eyeballs, 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 creepy. Another bear. And you get to close that with this. I feel you, goon, man. I feel you. And again, I, I, you know, Eric, Eric is this like uh, sideshow character that doesn't fit in with anybody. Kind of the feeling I'm getting across, and everything he draws and puts his uh, time and effort into, like, is is radiating his own personal demons out. I mean, this is, you know, this is Eric sitting in a chair drinking a beer. While everything else is tormenting him around, and that's a, that's a that, again. If you do red interiors for your covers, like you are knocking it out of the park, and this is a beautiful book. Eyeballs, creepiness. Ah oh, man, and then you finish it, and then you look at the cover again. And you're like, shit. I can't wait to like meet Eric and just shake his hand or give him a hug or all the above, because like, you get really inside his head with this book and i think it's really amazing what art book should i check out next because i think we knock it out of the this is like a huge huge the bar is so high after reading this or and that it'll be insane to compare the next one to it so all right guys like and subscribe share comment all that fun stuff you guys make this channel happen take care matt sardo